I'm with Marissa Gordon here. Marissa Gordon is fabulous, <laughs> and she's worked with me on a number of projects. Yeah. And um, the way we connected, though, was when we went out for a drink, and we started talking about sex. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized you were kind of the first one of your generation, at least in my world, that just had almost the same sexual aggression as I do <laughs> growing up. Yeah. So my question is, it may be in my world that I did not deal with sexually aggressive animals like you are, <laughs> or are you a rarity? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, it's interesting when I think about like my own friends, like half of them are like super prude, don't interact with guys. Who says this? Yeah. But then I guess I do have a handful of female friends that are aggressors, as yeah. we'll call them. Yeah. 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 That, like, see a hot man, walk right up to them. I like that. Introduce themselves, maybe send sexual videos or photos. <laughs> upon yeah, that does go on. I just uh, oh. met these women. Yes, yeah. So, I mean, I think especially here in New York City, I think, like, I think it's a geographical location thing as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's Yeah, true. like, I think probably, like, L.A., New York City, Miami. Well, here's another question. Yeah. We live in fluid times, and yeah, when I was growing up, yeah. I was not growing up, but certainly from 30s on, I mm -hmm. was going out with women mm -hmm. and men. Yeah. What about your world? Is it fluid? Oh, me personally, yeah. or like my generation? Well, I know your generation's plenty fluid, but yeah. are you? I mean, I guess like, I don't really care. Like if I met a woman that I thought was attractive and was really into her, like I don't see why I wouldn't go for it. Mm -hmm. But, like, I guess I don't, like, identify as fluid. I guess I don't, like, really identify as, like, anything because I don't give a fuck. Oh, okay. You so know, Broad I mean? City. I love this. Well, I feel like that's, like, the next level of, like, what's happening is, you know, people are identifying as fluid. And then I feel like it's almost going beyond that. And it's, like, label-less. People are, like, I don't give mm -hmm. a fuck. Like, why do I need to label anything? Because, like, I have friends that previously identified as, like, lesbians or bisexual who are now, like, nah, like, not really into labels. I'm just me. And it's like, I don't know, like, I guess, like, labels can help other people get you, but I guess, like, at the same time, like, I don't know. I love that. Yeah. All right. So, here's another question. Yes. I, I think that your generation is so honest about their sexuality, about what they pursue. We were into dating. But yeah. dating really basically meant eventually getting fucked. Yeah. So, do you miss the in a way, a romance of dating, or you don't care? Well, I guess for me, I don't miss it because it's never existed for me or, like, my generation. I think for us, it's like we're all too broke and straddled with student loan debt to, like, even if you're successful and have a great job, like, we can't afford to go out. So I feel like the few people I know who do go on dates are with people of a much older generation who can shell out three to $500 on a nice restaurant or something, but it's like... I don't know. I feel like I don't miss. There's nothing I miss. I don't want. I don't want that. I don't yeah. aspire to that. But, like, at the same time, one thing I hear from people of, like, my generation and my friends is that, like, that sometimes you get sick of these guys just being like, hey, I want to come over and Netflix and chill. I would imagine. You're like, fuck you. Like, and it's not romance that I want. It's just, like, maybe a little bit more respect of, like, right. buy me that pre-sex drink at a bar. Show me you're not a total a fucking loser. Flowers. Yeah, like, I don't know. I don't even need flowers, but, like, show me you're not a fucking deadbeat. Yes. Like, yes, you know yes. what I mean? Like, <laughs> great, like, you have an apartment, like, Honey, good. come in a little. Ooh, I can't yes. believe I just said that yeah. online. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> so, just a little more about this whole sex, your generation. Yeah. I, I know it's all about hookups. I've been online plenty. I love online. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, um, I mean, plenty of your friends, I'm sure, had a little romance, had a little something going. So it's not like it's completely void, right? Well, I guess the term romance is interesting. Like, I do have friends that have boyfriends, fiancés, and husbands. But romance, I mean, obviously I don't see them, like, intimately or behind closed doors. But um, uh, I strongly do not believe that a lot of these people have what you would consider romance. Yeah. Yeah. I think, like, again, I think, like, my generation, we were, like, royally fucked up the ass. And, like, like I think about, like, my one friend that's married. 
her and her husband both work till almost 10 p.m. every night. Wow. So, like, right. they rarely even see each other. So this, like, idea of romance is almost laughable when them trying to, like, coordinate schedules yeah. is the hard. Like, my only other married couple friend, they have to Google calendar schedule sex. Because, again, they both work till so late at night. It's... So, that, like, we, you know, we're, again, like, our generation just got fucked. Like, we're all freelance, and if we're not, we're, like, a slave to, like, a major company, like, a huge corporation, you know, that keeps you there until late at night. So, it's, like, romance. Like, I don't think our generation even has, like, a concept of, like, what that is. You know, amazing. I, I understand that. It <laughs> yeah. completely makes sense. I'm not sure, though. I, I like to, I don't want to be that part of my generation that, oh, you missed out. But you kind of did miss out. <laughs> On the other hand, yeah. I liked that I, I liked the honesty of your, uh, you know, you have online, you go, you gotta have sex, it is what it is, instead of all the rigmarole. But um, it wasn't a lot of fun going out. Right, I think some people still go out, but I think it's almost like a little bit more like methodical and less like romantic and free, like I feel like in past generations, yes. because I feel like, my friends that do use the dating apps, it's more like this regimented routine that they just walk through. Okay, I'll meet this guy at the regular bar. He'll show up. We'll each have a drink. Yes. I'll find him creepy. We won't be attracted. We'll leave after an hour and go home. If they don't have another date scheduled at the bar next door. So I feel like people might still go out, but I feel like it really lacks something of, yeah. of the past. Yeah. Yeah. So, what I also like about you is your sexual... I am so over the word empowerment. Yeah, me too. Me uh, too. I know. We need uh, a better word for that. We really need it. Uh, but, and sex positive. I think I'm over that oh, one too. Me too. I, I, yeah, yeah. I feel like once you label things, they get weird. Eh, and and they just keep coming up and it just... And then they're using advertising campaigns. Oh, and yeah. That was, and, that, and that's how you know that like we're done with it. Like Once advertising agencies <laughs> latch onto a concept, you know that the actual youth are done with it. But we have talked about things like the numbers game. You know, you're going out with someone and how many lovers. I don't know if that exactly would be in a conversation, but with this mm. last person I'm with, we talked about our number of partners. And he had the nerve at my age to give me some shit about the number of lovers I had. I mean, I could see he was uptight. What about you in your world? So for me personally, actually, I, like, if a guy asks, I don't disclose because I'm like, that's not your business. Like, your business is to know that I am, right. like, that I am, like, disease-free and, like, whether or not I'm on birth control. Like, that's your business. That affects you. But, like, the number of partners I've had, like, I, is not his business yeah, or anyone's. Right. So I don't answer. Um, I do have people, like, disclose to me their number. And I'm like, that's nice. Yes. That's that's kind of you to feel comfortable to share that with me, but I feel zero obligation to share my number. Like, why? Also, I don't actually know my number. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't care. I had one summer where I actually did uh, yeah. just enumerate. <laughs> it was like, go, go. Yeah, I think the one time, like, maybe in college, I made a list or post-college, and I was like, wow, girl, <laughs> okay. I only admitted to this guy because I'm, I've been with him for, not admitted, I just, like, I own this. Yeah, and he was just like a little nerd about it. So hey, get over that. Well, and I think that's actually a reason why I don't say it is like I don't need your opinion on it, and I also don't give a fuck about your opinion on it. Exactly. Because like the truth is, is I feel like my number is often higher than what other guys or whatever are saying to me, and like I don't need their opinion. I don't give a fuck about their opinion, and also just like I think it is intimidating to a lot of people. Oh, don't. And I also don't think it necessarily means anything because I, I think you can be a highly sexual person and have a really low number. So, like, that's I don't true. think it's actually sharing anything, like, no, that's, important that's about you. Point. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. The, the whole slut shame, number shame, right. you cannot go there with me. Right. Like, yeah, I guess, like, for me, personally, I don't really give a fuck about other people's opinions. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. So, I'm just like, whatever. I'm not asking for your opinion. I'm not going to share it. You're and very, it's not, and you're I'm not very ashamed. young to come to that conclusion. You don't give a fuck about other people's opinion. I'm in here. Yeah, well, I guess my mom is a very, like, I don't give a fuck about what you think kind of person. And I, my gra both grandmothers or and step-grandma are all, like, badass bitches that don't Ooh. give a fuck. Yeah, so I think, like, I was always exposed to that. My mom from 
very young age would always tell me like I don't care what anyone thinks of me like I worry about me like lovely now I come from a super Irish Catholic family and but also a mat matriarchy <laughs> and my women were fucking badass but not about sexuality they were all a little yeah the Catholic thing yeah you know I guess like no one my mom always said from a young age that it's like that Jewish women are like hypersexual and kind of wild and so like my mom actually herself is not like that at all it's kind of more kind of prudish and and I can't speak to my grandmothers or anything no. but just like I don't know very like tell it like it is take charge like I don't know for Jews the men are weaker the women are bossier. I love this <laughs> they're good at math <laughs> So, another generation question. Generation to sex. Um, someone told me that sex clubs are in. Is that true? I mean, I guess I didn't know they went anywhere. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Um, yeah, I think like what's, I would say in is more like sex parties as opposed to clubs. Oh, I love that. Because a clubs, like for example in New York City, are like open to the public, I think for the most part. Right. And so there's a lot of like creepy, like lecherous uh, men that you probably don't want to be interacting with. First at a sex club. Yeah, at a sex club that might be like open to the public. I don't know if it's still open. There used to be one called like Trapeze yes. in New York City. Um. But I know that private sex parties are a huge thing because it's like, you know, they really carefully like curate and like monitor and invite who can come. Okay. And so I know that there's like big ones in LA and London um, with a lot of like celebrities and well-known people. Um, yeah, so that is so like, I'm thing. talking about your generation. Or yeah, is it? Oh, because oh, yeah. I, I, I when I was a kid, I would go to Plato's retreat and I remember going twice and when I walked out the second time, I said to my date, I wouldn't talk to those people with their clothes on, much less fuck them. And, and, and even though it was considered cool, so that makes sense. Yeah, I think it's exactly what you're saying. It's like, I think when you walk into a club, you're kind of like, these people are disgusting. I want nothing to do with them. But that's why these are like invitation only. You like apply, uh -huh. you send a photo, maybe your Instagram a bio, a little bit about yourself, and then okay. it's curated to make sure that, like, everyone is, like, maybe, like, would be attracted to each other yeah. and, like, would mesh, right. um, po like, politically, socially, whatever. Right. Have you done? Um, I want to go to some of the really fancy ones, but, like, <laughs> I guess I've been, like, too lazy to apply and, like, I don't okay. know. I guess I'm too busy, but, like, highly interested. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. All right. Um... I just recently picked up the new Playboy. Actually, it's been out for a couple of months. It's been rebranded. How do you look at it? Um, so I remember reading that it, it's been redone. I remember reading for a while that they were like, we're done with vaginas, we're gonna do boobs only. And then I think there was a backlash to that. And they're like, sorry, no, we'll do, we'll go back. So I don't actually know, but I know that was the thing. Well, I'm going to give you a little background. Yeah. Because um, I picked it up recently. Again, it's been talking in the rebrand world, and that is my world. And I thought, you know, good luck. Um, it's now been taken over by a, a, a woman editor, or certainly a lot of women on staff. Mm -hmm. uh, women now photograph the nudes. Um, and exclusively I, women. Yes. Oh, so it's very young women empowered, you mm -hmm. know, millennials. Yeah. And there are these words that are all about, um, uh, 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 uh oh, shit, too bad. Why? Keep going. Yeah, no, no. Oh, okay. What is the word when you have, um, oh, I know. Empowerment. Yes, but I fucked that up. No, it doesn't matter. Oh, no? Okay. No. Well, uh, I think I have to start from scratch, don't you? No, you can literally just like, oh, you can okay. give it like five beats and you can just like ask oh, okay. the question over again. So there is this, you know, word um, of wake. Everyone's, oh, woke. Oh, woke. woke. Yeah. They're all woke over yeah. there. But right. I have to say, I opened it up with a, an open mind. Yeah. But I just found it cheesy. I just found it bullshit. There was this whole section in the back about a woman about my age, maybe a little older, uh, and she was talking about how empowered that fucking word again. She felt of being a Playboy bunny, taking her clothes off when she was 20 and doing it again at 65. And it's just like, uh, wrong. Not, not to take your clothes off, but do it for you, not for some gaping bullshit. It did not work for me. I personally, I don't want to talk too much 
But I will say, for me, in my generation, I think of the Grotto, I think of uh, Bill Cosby, I think of venereal disease, I think <laughs> of Hefner, what an asshole he was. And I wonder how you approach Playboy. Well, it's funny because to me, like when I like initial response to Playboy, I think of like nineteen sixties. Like I think of like dated, like the the like retro Playboys yes. of like the past. But it was so interesting when you were talking about it only being female photographers. That's really yes. interesting to yes. me because like I do model and I have like worked for similar type publications yeah. as a model yeah. and. It's really interesting to me because, like, I think that's great to have more women yes. shooting and more women part of the creative. But sometimes why I like shooting with certain male photographers is they actually do see the female body in a really different light huh. than women. And sometimes they can, like, get sexual energy out of you that you might not get when working with a woman. Yeah. Um, and so, like, to me, I actually feel like that's why I was curious about the quality of the shots and or, like, the energy behind them. Because to me, that's actually, like... I don't know how I feel about that. Like, only female photographers? I almost feel like that's its other... No. Just, like, opening the door to a new form of discrimination. I think, like, just, like, a woman's eye mm. offers something different. I think so does a man's eye. Well, I might be wrong. Maybe okay. men and women are shooting this. I thought yeah. only women, or at least there's a woman director. But because I personally didn't feel a difference in the photography. I didn't feel it any different. It, the whole fucking thing came off cheesy. Mm -hmm. And I wonder what you would think. I have it here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd love to look at it. Yeah. Like, I haven't seen it. But I also don't like that it's making an assumption that women are uncomfortable shooting nudes with a man. Do you know what I mean? Like, because I feel like that's a lot of what I'm hearing. Is mm -hmm. that, like, oh, like, to be safe, like, it has to be... Oh, it has to be females. It's like, mm, like. Oh, I see. I don't think that's a point. I think I don't think that's a point there. I think that they're saying, well, we're empowering you. We get you, and we're going to send a different message. I don't think they felt that the models were at all fe felt afraid. Uh, I would. I would venture to guess that that's probably part of a reason. A hundred percent is like probably from like that initiative but that's like also assuming that we are like victims and like meek i hate that well there was something on instagram the, the, the other day and this is why i picked it up there's the whole celebration i guess they had a big party mm. everyone's going on about so many fe female editors and i like that absolutely yeah but um i just felt picking it up it felt cheesy there's this whole for me bullshit section in the back about the power of the bunny and I kept thinking about Gloria Steinem before your day. Gloria Steinem wrote a fabulous piece about being a bunny in mm -hmm. the 60s and it was totally like this place sucks. Yeah. Maybe you should come over there and be a bunny. <laughs> come back with an interview. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. <laughs> that's so funny. I actually didn't know that she was a Playboy bunny. That's really For a minute. For an that, article that she did. That's so funny. I had no idea. Yeah. It'd be fun to read again. Yeah.